Welcome to this worship event. We are on Advent, counting down to Christmas and waiting on what the Lord will bring to us anew. Let's now turn our hearts to the King born in Bethlehem and sing together. Oh, 
Zang weer oor die vrede Door eeuwe lang verwacht Vertel die wonderstoor Vandaar die blije dag De samenkomst van liefde Die kinder speel en lach Soos die engele sing ons saam Oor die huis Jesus, Jesus, your high is ons geschied. Ons bring hier on home as ons hier die dag gedek. Cash, Jesus, Jesus, I bring ons allemaal song. So lich jou wande, lich jou steen, loof en prijs zijn. Die liefde van ons Heer Een kind is vir ons gebore Om die wereld te kom leer Hy lijk sy wil, sy vreugde Hy wees ons daar is meer Sy hoop leef in ons harte En sy geest vir ons gegeer O, kerst wees is hier Ons bring hier aan om, as ons hier die 
Heavenly Father, O God of peace, form us into your peacemakers. Enable us to look within ourselves, to make straight our crooked hearts, to patiently and lovingly await changes in ourselves and others. As you gather us tenderly and hold us close, may we also show that same compassion to the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's now an opportunity to bring your financial contributions. The ways of giving will appear on your screen. You can scan over the QR code that will take you to our website with all the digital ways of giving. If you are tuned in on your phone, the link will be posted by the host in the chat function. Christmas is a time to come together in our immediate family, extended family, and and friends, to share something of the love of Jesus with each other. We invite you to the times of coming together at Mosaic this year. It also serves as a perfect opportunity to invite others along and share the Christmas spirit. On Sunday morning, 17 December, it's our Christmas carol services, followed by a celebration on the piazza, and they will all also be music and activities for for the young ones. On the 24th of December, we will have two morning services as well as a Christmas Eve service. On the 25th of December, we'll have our Christmas Day services. And on New Year's, the 31st of December, we'll have morning services. Please visit our webpage for more information on our services and times over the festive period. Today, we welcome Vusi Vilekati as guest preacher. We look forward to the word he will bring us. I greet you all in the wonderful and strong name of Jesus. Can I greet you again in that old church greeting? where the one that's leading the service says, the peace of the Lord be with you. And the audience responds, and also with you. And that theme of peace is our theme for today. It is part of the Advent themes that we reflect on. Advent, what does that word mean? It's a word from Latin that means advenur, and it means to come to. It is a season where we anticipate and prepare and celebrate a time of watching and waiting and listening and paying attention to the coming of God. We pay attention to the past, to the present and the future. And as the church has always said, Christ has come, Christ is here, Christ will come again. In the season of Advent, we wrap ourselves around those gifts of Christmas in those four themes that sit on that Advent wreath. Hope, joy, peace, and love. And we anticipate that at the heart of that wreath is the Christ that comes to us. And so today, I want us to talk about this wonderful verse in scripture, which is in Luke chapter 2, the story of the coming of the Christ. It is a story about the glory of God and and the invitation that peace might fill the earth. The glory of God, as as Luke writes, he writes in this way, in chapter 2, verse 14. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Can you imagine these powerful words? The glory of God and the peace that floods the whole universe and the whole earth. But maybe let me invite you to think about peace for a moment with me. 
What is peace? Can we really define peace in easy ways? How does it look like? How does it feel like? How does it taste like? Can you describe it at the metaphors that come to you of peace? Is it like a beach that flows with wonderful waves or a green lush of grass? Or is it anything that you think it's beautiful? The sound of children playing in the, in, the, in the yard or just a cup of coffee at the end of the day or that calm, serene moment of listening to music. What does peace mean to you? But those that define peace would say it is something that covers every aspect of your being, your emotions, your physical being, your spiritual well-being, and your social circumstances. When all of that is at peace, then you understand a bit of peace. But somebody once also said, peace, when you define peace, it depends with where you're standing in the world. Right now, there are places that we think about. When you're standing after an exam, if you are a student, the peace of not having to study one more for one more exam, it's a beautiful moment. If you're a parent of young children, the moment when the children go off to bed and they are asleep and you have your last coffee of the day, that's a moment of peace. But there are more, more complex and difficult places to stand. Think of those that stand in places of poverty and have stood there for a long time. What does peace mean for them? Think of children right now that are standing in the war zones around the world. What does peace stand for in their eyes? So peace is a very difficult reality to think about. But when we think of it in the most simplest way, we can say peace is a state of mental and physical ease that simultaneously revitalizes us and enhances our resiliency so that we can withstand the battering and the buffering we encounter as we go our, with our lives every day. So peace is not just the absence of war or conflict, but peace is the creation of an environment where all can flourish and flourish in every dimension, race, color, creed, religion, class, as Nelson Mandela would have put it. And so there are many dimensions of peace, many dimensions. And one person would say, peace is just an internal state of harmony, feeling at peace with myself, feeling at peace with my mind, my heart, and feeling at peace in my body. That's a state of peace. Somebody would say, peace is a practice. It is the things I do to create peace in me and in those around us. The biblical motif and metaphor of peace, that um, Jewish metaphor of shalom, it means peace in every dimension of life. Psychological, emotional, ecological, social, in every aspect of our lives, finding itself in a peaceful state of mind. But peace is also a way of developing peaceful, a sense of peacefulness within our bodies, within our minds, enabling behaviors that create peace. Enabling those behaviors that I know if I behave in this way, I am growing my state of peace. But also nurturing peaceful relationships, developing a peaceful social space. Can we dare even say, thinking about a social and economic and a political space that could create more peace for our world and for our countries and for everyone that we know. But we must also understand there are also ways in which people can, can hope for false peace and false peace, in my mind, is a number of things. It is the moments when we try and suppress our true feelings in order to avoid conflict, in order to maintain a superficial harmony. Sometimes it is the moment when we ignore conflicts and forms of injustice around us and we sweep things under the carpet. And as we ignore those things, we create a superficial sense of calm within us and in the environment we live in. 
But sometimes it is when we prioritize our own comfort and convenience over the well-being of others, turning a blind eye to the systemic issues that perpetuate inequality around us. Advent at its heart is an invitation to think about ways in which we reject every form of false peace and then enter the challenge of working towards true peace. So today, I want to invite you to three relationships of peace that we will consider. I want you to think about these relationships, and let me list them up front. Peace with God, peace with ourselves, and peace with others. But let me start with peace with God. You know, when we think about peace with God, it is the fact that we think of the creator of the universe and how our lives could rhyme and be in rhythm with the one that created the universe. It is how I live out my spirituality and and think of practices and ways in which my life and my faith is anchored truly and focused only on God as the source and the beginning and the perfecter and the giver of life. It is when I look at the creation that God has created and I marvel at the beauty of that creation. And as I marvel at the beauty of creation, I praise God for all of that. It is when I look at all of the things that God has given us and to enjoy the resources of the world and I look at them and I say, all of them are gifts from God. It is me turning my whole existence and my whole life towards God. Some people would call that repentance. The taking of my whole life and shifting it and turning it towards God. Rowan Williams puts this idea of considering a relationship and peace with God, puts it in in this way. It is to learn to look to God without regard to my own instant satisfaction. Learn to scrutinize and and to learn to scrutinize and to relativize the cravings and fantasies that arise in me. This is to allow God to be God. And thus allow the prayer of Christ to be true to me. God's own relation to God to come alive in me. When God fully comes alive in me and I am turned away from all of those things that are false pretenses about my relationship with God and I figure out ways of placing my life in the hands of God and loving God and loving God with my genuine authentic heart and allowing my life to be truly centered on the power and the spirit and the life that only God gives. But apart from me focusing on God, there is also another relationship. It is the peace that I have with myself, the peace we have with ourselves. What does it mean to think about peace with ourselves? It is that moment we think about what the anxieties and all of the things that are within us, when I allow myself to be free from them, those things that have, that have held, held my life back from the past and the things that I'm anxious about from the future, and when I allow all of those things and I place them in the hands of God and I allow my mind, my heart, and all everything in me to be at peace in the presence of God. Listen to this scripture from Philippians chapter 4 and listen to these words. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. What a beautiful scripture. Think of this image 
of your hearts and minds being guarded by the power and the presence of Christ. Think of peace with, within self and with God and within ourselves as allowing our minds to be channeled and to be charged by the power and to be touched and to feel the waves of the Spirit of God channeling us into the goodness of the love and the presence of God. And allowing that spirit to also guard our hearts against the anxieties from the past and the guilt from the past and the anxieties about the future. Somebody once said, salvation at its core, it is when God releases us from the guilt of the past and frees us to be truly who we are in the present. But it also, it is also when God releases us from the anxieties about the future and gives us the permission to be truly present and alive in the present and trust God for the, for the forgiveness of the things of the past and the promise of the future and that we may live fully into the present, trusting God with every step of our way and every step of our journey because God's presence is true. Some people will say, these are the true practices of mindfulness, allowing ourselves to be immersed in the solitude and the power of the presence of God in our lives. Then the last way of thinking about peace. First I said, peace with God. Second I said, peace with ourselves. But the last one, it is peace with others. Peace with others, what would that mean? It means that in this season of Christmas where we have visitors and friends and family and have everyone around us coming to celebrate together, it is, means that I will take time this season to celebrate those relationships, to celebrate the gift of family and friends, to build positive relationships, to invest in the lives of others, to consider the ways in which I have broken relationships and people have broken relationships with me and figure out ways, how can I walk with God into those places to create peaceful relationships? It might mean I consider the vulnerability of going and asking for forgiveness and offering forgiveness. It might mean practicing empathy with those around us. It might mean giving ourselves the, into the relationships that we live in fully and with commitment. Pope Francis writes this way when he thinks about what the gift of Advent and peace might mean. Advent invites us to a commitment to vigilance, looking around beyond ourselves, expanding our mind and heart in order to open ourselves to the needs of people, of brothers and sisters, and to desire, a desire to the desire for a new world. Can you see the dimensions of that? It is to be vigilant and committed and opening ourselves. The idea that Christmas comes with this gift of God opening God's self towards us and filling, God's, filling us with the whole of God's goodness. And we, in response, we open ourselves to God, to cleaning our hearts and allowing our hearts to be prepared for the arrival of this beauty that comes in a child but also to practice the building of peace in the places around us and really creating meaningful relationships with those around us and making sure our lives are filled with the goodness of God. So let me challenge you with a few practices to consider for this season and invite you to become weavers and creators of hope. And as I speak of the word weaving, it reminds me of my grandmother. She used to weave baskets and mats and all kinds of things in all textures of color and different ways. 
the thing I didn't like about my grandmother is that she would sometimes wake up as early as 4 a.m. in the morning and you would hear her make noise as she tried to start with her all objects and cleaning things up and tidying things up and making sure that her job of weaving became a wonderful moment. By the time we would wake up, she would be showing us sometimes the things that she had been working on. If it's a basket, she would be showing us the colors she had put in and we would be excited with her about the possibility of even those things that she was still putting together. Can this Advent season be for me and you a gift of being builders of peace, weavers of peace, weaving our relationship with God, recreating it, weaving a relationship with those around us and thinking about it, weaving a relationship in the spaces of work and business and in every place where we function. Can you think of some specific acts? Are there ways you can act with kindness this season? Can you adopt the practice of forgiveness? Are you, can you cultivate empathy and show it to people around you? Can you be the one that promotes, depending on the amount of power and influence you have, that promotes dialogue in your community, in the country, across the world, in the places where the countries and communities and, and places are at war? Can we embrace the vulnerability of a child like the Christ child in the manger? Can we practice empathy? Are there ways we can promote justice and peace and give ourselves to causes that shape the goodness of the world and shape the world into the beauty that God created it to be? And so the invitations, peace with God, peace with ourselves, and peace with each other. I want, as I conclude, as you think of these practices, to invite you to that beautiful prayer of peace. And as you think of it, may I just invite you with me in this very moment to stretch out your hands. If you're sitting, sit comfortably. Feel your breath. Feel your lungs pump in as you breathe in. Feel them loosen as you breathe out. And may you allow these words of the prayer of peace by the St. Francis of Assisi to just pour over you as I pray it with you. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now may I send you with a blessing of peace. May the peace of God, the creator of the universe, of every limb in us and everything in us, be with you. May Jesus Christ, his son, give you life, restore you, free you from anxiety and guilt. And may the fresh breath of God's Holy Spirit keep you, guide your hearts, and strengthen you for the week ahead. Go with love to the activities and the duties and the things of this world. And be at peace with everything you come across. Amen.